Welcome to the Blackout Podcast where I get to talk to amazing people who do amazing things. And today, finally, actually, we've been trying to make this happen for a long, long time. I get to have Alisa to get of, and I love this, what are colors making smile? Super artist, super talented artist. Aww. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm actually really envious of your Instagram engagement. Because, you know, I know people that have like a ton of followers and your likes is like, eh, I don't know. But like, you just put, Oh, look, I'm doing this and it's like... <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming to the podcast today. Thank you for having me. So, um, I'll talk about the social media thing later. Let's start with the art thing. Like, have you always been painting or...? No, I've always been into drawing and art since a child, but I started painting seven years ago and then consistently for the past three years. Huh. What happened seven years ago? Seven years ago, I, long story or short story? Long story, please. The long story, okay. Went to a store. There was a big restructure going on at work. I was stressed out. And so I went into a store to look for, some, a health food store to look for something for my anxiety. And this woman that was working there said, here's some L-theanine, it's an amino acid. Mm -hmm. um, I take it, it might help, but also I'm a meditative coach. You could come see me sometime and gave me her card and I just tucked it away thinking like, I'm not gonna do anything with this. Mm -hmm. um, and things kept getting worse at work and stress and anxiety. And so finally I'm like, I'm just gonna go see what she has to offer, right? So I go and I had no idea what to expect. She told me um, that a chakra clearing might be really helpful. So I'm like, no idea what that is. <laughs> I'm like, that's what, literally <laughs> that was my, what is that? Yeah. And so she takes me in a room. I lay down on a bed, uh, like kind of like a massage table type of a deal. And she is doing Reiki over my different chakras while there is a, an audio playing of um, like the ohms, all of that on the background. And it's going through each chakra and like the different, um, I don't know how to fully explain it, but the different things that they house basically. Mm. And she said, if anything sticks out to you, let me know after. If not, just whatever, just go with it. And I'm laying there and she's doing her thing. And I'm like, what the Fuck did you get yourself into? <laughs> this is kooky, Alyssa. But I'm like, no, be open-minded. You've got nothing to lose. So mm -hmm. I did. And then when she went over this area, it was creativity that uh, stood out to me. And um, when we were done, um, I tried to sit up and I couldn't sit up. It was really, really weird. And I'm like, why can't I sit up right now? And she's like, don't worry, I cleared a lot out of you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but finally I sat up and she's like, just take your time. I'm gonna go back to the other room. I'm gonna write some stuff down yes. and then come back when you're ready. And I go back and she's done writing stuff down and she asked if anything stood out to me. And mm. I was like, well, creativity. And she turned around her piece of paper and it said creativity in huge letters underlined a bunch of times. And I was just like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. yeah, so I got to get creative. And then I went and got a canvas and some acrylic paints and I tried painting. And wow. that's kind of when... That Did you ever see her again after that? Oh, yeah. I go to her yearly now on my birthday as a treat because it's like a burden gets right. lifted off of me no matter what it is. And um, so, yeah. And then it even goes further than that, that when I had my second child, I was on maternity leave and I was working at a bank, which... Sorry if anyone that works at the bank is watching this, but it was soul sucking for a creative person to right. be working there. Um, I was so stressed out. I did not want to go back. And on my birthday, when I went to see her, I was just like, I don't want to go back. Like I want work-life balance. I want to be with my kids. And she's like, well, then you're not going back. And I'm like, what? Like, what are, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like right. what? And um, I had this idea for a long time. She's got this really cute Boston Terrier dog. His name is Riggins. And he's just a whole part of the spiritual thing, too, because he's lovely. Mm -hmm. um, and I had this idea to paint him with his chakras. Oh. And I had the idea for a long time, but I didn't do it until like a month after I saw her at that appointment telling me I'm not going to work at the bank. She's mm -hmm. telling me what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. She's awesome like that. 
Um, and I left it on her doorstep because it was COVID. And she opened it and texted me. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're going to be an artist. What are you doing? <laughs> and so then she made a Facebook post and she asked her followers, because um, it's her business page, would you, would you pay her to make you something like this? And it was like an astounding, yes, how do I reach her? Blah, blah, blah. And it was like this push that I needed right. to finally do that. So... Holy smokes. And this is the thing that happened three years ago? Or? So this was, yeah, three years ago. Wow. Ha, yeah. Ha. Yeah. So I've known her for seven years. Holy smokes. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So back, like, with the drawing, do you, I mean, I guess you didn't study that in school, right? No. Right? No. So this is all I'm just doing myself. Because actually, yeah, you said self-taught in your on your thing. So self-taught, self-taught. I wanted to go to school. When I was in high school, I started my portfolio. Um, I went to visit NASCAD, all of that. And then my parents were like, Alyssa, what are you going to do? You like, have to do something with your life. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> like, it doesn't seem stable. Like, what? Like I didn't paint at that point. I just knew I liked art. I right. didn't. And so I didn't and, you know, worked a few different jobs and I hated it. And yeah, now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So... Uh, you 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 painted. What were some of your very first commissions that you did? Um, a lot, a lot of pet portraits. That's what kind of kicked it off, and that was the thing. I'm like, okay, so now I know I'm going to sell. Well, what do people want to buy? Mm. And it was pet portraits and house portraits, and then eventually that kind of led more into landscapes, and that's what I like love love to do is landscapes. What do you love about? Um. Oh my God. Well, I love painting water because I love the reflections on water. It's really fun. And it's also very free. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be super technical, like a house. I mean, of course I've got houses here, but it's, it's quite technical, but you can play around more with the colors and, and things and really make it your own, I guess. And just mm. be like, woo, 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 <laughs> like, you know, painting the clouds and yeah, it's a yeah. little more than that. Okay. But, yeah. You know what? I don't think it's, easy mm. because I, I like to think of myself as a you know a fast learner i pick things up easily and stuff and then there's this thing that they do in the city where you kind of go to like a bar or whatever and you drink and, and then someone is painting and you're mm. kind of painting along mm -hmm. i like my painting always crap so like i don't think i think you know i i think there are just some people that can paint like mm -hmm. yourself and like some people that i cannot do this like yeah. even if you did you know where you like Paints by numbers, mm -hmm. I'd still find a way to mess it up. <laughs> so, like, with, with, with something like this, do you start with a, a photo or...? Yes, yeah, I always start from a photo. Um, and that's all part of the fun of it is figuring out how to put it together. It's like a puzzle, right? And it is challenging. And my first paintings looked like crap, too, and they would end up in the <laughs> garbage. And um, I think I just love the challenge of it because it's not easy to do, and mm. I can see other artists can do it. And then the more I do it and the more I figure it out, the more I know I can figure it out. Right. And, yeah. Okay, what is the easiest thing? You know, you get the canvas. I guess that's easy. But oh. what's the easiest thing to do when the actual painting and the most difficult thing when it comes to painting? Oh my God, that's hard because every one is a challenge and like I might start off thinking it's going to be like easy and there's always something that trips me up that I need to figure out and that's, again, that's the fun of it. Mm. So the easiest part, I don't know. I think now, before I always used to get tripped up because it goes through like the ugly stage where it needs more layers because like this is lots and lots of layers. That took me probably like a week to paint, right? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you think it would take? Oh, that is hours? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that took me like a week to paint, so... Okay, uh, wait, 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 wait. So let's talk about this painting. Okay. So, so like, it blew my mind. A week? Okay, mm. so it's white, right? The canvas of the, of the thing? So it's wood. It's wood that I paint. It's birch. So I prime it. Oh, what, what is that? Um, Prime is uh, an acrylic medium that makes it so the paint doesn't soak into the wood. Oh, uh, so it's yeah. like clear? Like it's, clear? Like it's, transparent? You can buy clear, but oh, I use okay. white. Okay. Don't ask me why. That's just what I know. It's what I do. And mm. then, but you can buy black gesso as well black primer which i want to try at some point because that's pretty intriguing to be painting on a black background so when it's white like that also affects your paint right the mm -hmm. paint you put on it 
fuck. Okay. So anyway, so you paint it white, then what? Yeah, and then I underpaint it. So before, like, if you notice my past videos, it was always yellow underneath. Everyone's thought, people thought it was mustard at one point when they saw <laughs> me, like, dumping out the paint. Uh, no, I'm not painting with mustard. Um, and lately I've been experimenting more with orange. And it just kind of warms it because, like you said, it does affect the layers that go on top of it. It shines through a bit. Mm. So, okay. yeah. Then where do you start? Do you start with the sea or do you start with the mm, I usually brush? usually always start with the sky and oh. then I work my way from the back to the front. So like these houses and oh, trees are in the Oh yeah, because it's 3D-ish. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, uh, this is what, Lunenburg? Or? Yes, Lunenburg. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then that kind of builds like the depth, I guess. And then, but I do go back and forth because sometimes I get bored of one spot. So I'll go to a different spot. and. So wait. You know, uh, man, my brain is just like... That's okay. My brain's like that, too. <laughs> Love to hear there everywhere. I'm fine with that. You, you have to paint the photo, sorry. Mm -hmm. Do you ever, like, do drawings before you even paint? Or you just go straight to the thing? Um. So when I underpaint it, then I will loosely draw it with the, a similar color on top. So I kind of get where everything should be. Yeah. Okay. And then... Okay, so walk me through what this week of the painting would look like. Day one, what happens? Oh, goodness. So day one, yeah, I would have... So first I prime it, then I underpaint it. I do like the loose drawing on it. And then I would go in with the sky. And I think that was day one right there. Like even just building the layers on the sky, which doesn't even look that in depth, but it is a couple of different colors. Yeah. Um, and I do, like you can see the orange poking through there. I really like that where it pokes through. So I leave that. Other artists might want to fully cover it. It's up to the artist. Mm. That's day one right there. I get five hours when my kids are in school. So. Right. Oh, shit. Yeah, mom too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a balancing act. Holy smoke. Mm -hmm. I can't even... Okay, okay. So then the second day, what, what will happen? Second day, then I would have been focusing on the houses because then those are next. And then the house and then the water. Although for some reason, I'm thinking back to my videos. I feel like I did the water before I did all that for some reason, probably because mm. I was excited to paint the water. It really depends on the painting, but mm. yeah, a different artists do it different too. Like they might just focus on one section at a time, like only do this house, for example, but I can't do that book. Like I'd have to do you a bit of everything. everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, process. okay, so, you know, let's just go straight to the last day. What are the things you do for finishing touches there? Well, then that goes back to your previous question. What is the hardest part of the painting is knowing when to be done, when to stop adding in the details, because sometimes you can go overboard with the details. <laughs> and I do like, yeah, so that's really hard. And sometimes my artist friends and I will message each other and be like, is this done? Like, should I do this? Should I do that? And <laughs> it's really helpful to have other artist friends. And, yeah. and like, did you have these friends before you started your business or you met them through Instagram? Or... Um, I did not know any other artists before I started this. And now I know a ton of them. And I'm so thankful. Like Instagram has been incredible for that. One of my best friends now, she had reached out to me on Instagram and we got together and like our lives are so similar. It's crazy. She's got kids the same age as me. She's an, a, an artist that works from home as well. And um her son goes to my daughter's school like we oh. didn't even know this <laughs> it's crazy yeah. and we've known each other a couple of years now and um even some of the artists and other small businesses we will plan like a night out together like the right. ladies so it's we learn from each other and boost each other up and give each other advice and have drinks and it's <laughs> <laughs> it's of nice. course i have drinks yeah wine i'm guessing I do like wine. Uh, the last time we went out, it was, was it Social Mercantile? Right, right, right. And they had some cool cocktails there. So we were drinking <laughs> one with jalapeno in it, and <laughs> it was cool. It was spicy. Okay, yeah. so this is this, like, most of, is, uh, most of it were commissions or for yourself? So this one is an original and the other one that you'll show is an original as well because I'm doing a collection. I was thinking I would drop it this month, but I still have a couple other I want to make. Um, so probably next month. Um, a lot of what you see that I'm posting are commissions. Right. Yeah. So the originally is like, you're making for you or you'll sell it at some point? The or... originals I will be selling. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's the other thing then, you know, as artists, you're making this thing you love because mm-hmm. you love what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I don't know how much you're making it back. So you kind of have to replace that pay somehow. Mm-hmm. And then the thing you kind of replace the bank with is this. So did you ever at any point struggle with pricing? Like how? Do you- oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. Actually, Carly, who is my spiritual therapist, the one that cleared my chakras Mm -hmm. and got me being creative. She told me when I started, because she has a business herself. That's what she does. She told me pricing would make me puke. And she will walk me through it the best she can. She knew a couple other artists, so that was helpful. Um, I definitely undercharged when I started. Mm. I think it was kind of necessary, though, because it allowed me to do a lot and to get my name out there and a lot of practice, which was so important. Um, And now it's a little, it's, it's definitely easier now. And I used to undercharge as well because it would be something I wanted to paint and I was scared I would lose it, so I would do less mm. um and now it i know like i'm so busy that it has to be worth my time so i will charge and you know what even when i look at what other artists are charging i'm still undercharging. <laughs> i am and i might get there someday but i do want to also remain affordable because i want to i want to be in people's homes so so um huh. your website is great Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I your Instagram is freaking awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How did that start? That was a lot of work, um, but I knew it was necessary. Uh, before I had that account, I had my personal account because I loved art. I followed other artists and I would see them posting their videos, posting their photos and their process and finished work. And I just knew it was a necessary component. Mm-hmm to getting my name out there and having my work seen and it's free. It's so that's amazing. Um, and it was a lot of work and like networking with other artists Mm. and building a community. And so like you say, you see all these people liking it. A lot of those people aren't, a lot of them are customers, but a lot of them are also other artists because Mm. we all cheer each other on Mm -hmm. and that's important. Um, and then, yeah, it was this time last year I had a commission, Uh, from one of my favorite customers, he's a collector now, Um, got me to paint a sunset and it had the Canadian flag blowing in the wind. And that one, when I I made a reel for it, it blew up. And then I was like, I'm going to post every day. I'm going to post a reel every day. And that I did that until like September. And then... Wait, 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 wait. every day? Yeah. (laughs) Fuck. How do you, like, do you plan it ahead or... Uh, Ah, sometimes. But at that point, I was just like, I just need to post something. So I'm just going to record something, some part of the process, some me drinking my tea, looking at my (laughs) painting, like it's something. And you just use a trending audio. That's what they say to do. Um, And yeah, September, I had the one of the uh, Halifax Harbor. That one went viral. For me, at least, I think viral's like millions. I don't think it got millions, but it's like close to it actually mm. the last I checked and that's where you see my account at now is like 70 something thousand amazing people thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how do you manage that because I remember seeing your work and being like you know you have a ton of people how am I gonna like you know filter through that noise and is the internet you are you know a woman and you make arts and like Mm -hmm. the internet can be weird like how do you filter that noise um well there's a lovely restricted folder Mm. (laughs) so they will go the messages initially go there and then i do have to sort through them any that are just like hi (laughs) i don't respond to those because if you (laughs) yeah i when i first started i did because i'm like oh maybe they want to buy art but it's just like you know, something totally not related to that. And I'm not there for that. So, (laughs) um, uh, then yeah, it's, it's a balancing act again, because then that takes up part of my day. So I usually, while I'm eating breakfast, I might go through my messages and emails or Mm. right now, while I was waiting to come in to see you going through some messages and emails, anytime I get that free moment, Mm. because, uh, I don't like when it takes up my painting time. Like that's the main thing. And then that's just like the administrative. Are you ever going to do like an, like an exhibit? Um, I... I mean, you have enough work to do that. I'm yeah, guessing. I would like to. Where would I do? Like at, at a gallery. I love galleries and they have their place, but it's so hard to part with such a big 
percentage on like my own collection. Right, so right, right. I have been in a couple of group shows and um, I just know that what I paint, I don't really do a huge one because I understand I'm, I'm, there's a portion that's going to be taken away. Um, I actually did have the owner of the Cottage Cafe and Lawrencetown Cafe, he owns both of them, um, reach out to me the other day on Instagram and said that if I wanted to put my art on their walls, I could. Um, so we're going to arrange that. So my collection will be available to see there when people are enjoying their meals. So, mm. yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Okay, okay. So, you know, you navigate that. You're doing your art, you're doing your Instagram, but also your mom. Yes, yeah. How's that balancing act that you talked about? Um, it's a lot. Uh, I I paint when they are at daycare and school at the moment. Um, last summer, for some reason, I thought I was going to get a lot of painting done while they were both home for the summer, and I was very mistaken. <laughs> uh, so this summer I'm going to be taking on a little less to allow or at least tell my customers it'll get done throughout the summer and not have a lot of deadlines because mm. I want to take them to the beach. I want them to get the most out of their summer. Um, but I have to make money too. So right, 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 right. Yeah, we'll be figuring that one out. <laughs> what what is a literal balancing act, right? Always. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So now I, I see your work or whatever i'm like <clears throat> hello at least i love this thing i want you to make me something what happens from then um yeah so then i ask them to send me a photo or photos of what they would like painted and it does have to be one that they've taken or they have permission yeah why why copyright so i can't just like oh man i love that you know <laughs> anyway i love that <laughs> thing and then i and i send it to you yeah you, you can't paint that if it's on google then no because copyright infringement like a photographer took all of their that time and skill to take that photo so i can't go and you know actually i was getting a tattoo recently and i was talking to my tattoo artist about this and she told me that kat von d is going through a process right now someone's trying to sue her because she used the photographer's reference photo and tattooed it on someone so I'm not looking to have that <laughs> come my way. <laughs> I don't want to get sued. Yeah. Because it's not even losing or winning. Uh, as in, uh, there's this lawyer I love, like, he doesn't mince words on YouTube. He's like, if you are sued, you've already lost. Like, it doesn't mm. matter whether you win or lose. Because, like, every law case is the lawyer that wins. Mm -hmm. Like, right? mm -hmm. like, dude is going to make some... Anyway, so, yeah. yeah. You're, oh, I didn't even think I'd rather that. But talking about infringement, something just came to mind now. How do you feel about AI? Uh, and like that, the arts thing? I don't know a lot about it, but what I have heard is that the AI is taking art from lots of other artists and, and then using it. Yeah. So I don't feel great about that at all. I wouldn't want them using my art. I want to be getting paid if you're using my art and then that's why same with photographers that yeah. that is their hard work and they should be getting paid right if they see you making money off of their photos mm. right at least get their permission first and at least some of them are okay with that and other ones they're not and that's totally understandable okay so let's just go back so i send you something i took on my phone i'm mm -hmm. like this is my sunset i took it blah 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 then what happens um then i ask if they have a size in mind um oh wait see that's the other thing how does is the, does the i keep cutting you no, but like okay. everything is always like oh my god my brain is just like a pinball machine <laughs> but um how much of an influence is the sizing on the price um it it is a big difference um but the thing is too is the reason some artists will price based on the square inches and that's a great way to do it because then it's you can kind of just have a price list and customers know what to expect. Oh. But for me, if I'm like sometimes small, very detailed ones right. can take even longer than this one, right. right? So I don't like doing that. I want to see the photo. We figure out the size. And then sometimes if they don't know what size, I'll ask if they have a budget and then we can kind of work around that. Oh, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Yeah. And <laughs> one of the, there's a post, I don't know, a story or something you put on like, basically are kind of like booked for months and like mm. <laughs> i'm like i want this thing today and stuff <laughs> how do you like i guess navigate like what what decides the 
when I get my painting. So if you were to reach out to me today, I am booking for like the second week of July right now. Um, if things move quicker than I expect or I don't have other things going on, then I can squeeze you in. Not as much lately. Um, but yeah, then it would take, so you'd be waiting until July, start at the second week, and then it's probably, depending on the size, about a week that you'd have. Here's one for you though. Say this person, I don't know, I just won the freaking lottery and stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to wait till July. Is that amount I can pay that will bump me up to the... Uh, to, to I've the had a couple of people ask me to do that. And um, what happened, I, I just said, you know, I, I can't promise it because I... I I tell my customers like what month they're booked in. So if I did have that spot open up because I got through things quicker, then uh, yes, okay. I can do it. But I can't push the other ones back. I'm like, and sorry, I'm going yeah. back because I'm getting all this stuff. Yeah, and money is nice. And I just said, you know, you have the ability to, you know, if you want to tip me, just like any other customer can tip me, you certainly can. But I'm not going to ask you to pay me more. Like, I just don't feel right, right accepting that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So I can't, I can't, I was thinking I'll win the lottery and I'll get bumped up. Yeah. Anyway, um, what's the biggest size painting you've ever made? Mm, I think it was 30 by 60 inches is the biggest so far. Hmm. Yeah. I, I can't picture that. Like, how big? Big would um, that be? You have another like painting. Like the size of the door, basically. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take to make that one? Um, the Alaska one that took me probably a week and a half. So wait, is it this weeks. way or this way? The long way, oh, uh, landscape fuck way. Fuck me, shit. <laughs> That's so much work. <laughs> That's so much work. Like, um, when you paint, at least the videos we show you are usually standing. Like, yeah. how's your back? Um, Not bad, actually. And that's something, so when I used to paint with watercolors, you usually tape it down on the table. And so you're kind of hunched over that way. Oh. That was worse. And that was something I was worried about when I got the easel was, is my wrist going to get sore? But it actually is very, like, I find it more free and I don't, I don't find it bad at right. all. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, if I was working on a really huge one, then I might be like this, and that might hurt my neck, but yeah. So that was going to be my next question. Do you, do you ever see yourself doing a wall? Um, yeah, I would totally do that. I love the challenge, and I think that would be really cool to do. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're like, bring it. Bring it. Someone, <laughs> someone wants me to paint their wall? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Anara, um, uh, one of your reels that I loved was where you kind of showed this process of like, I finished a painting and then I deliver it to you. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, take it to the post office and mm. stuff. What is that process? Because like how, I guess, how much work does it go to getting the thing ready and mm. then sending it away? Yeah, yeah, that is a process. And before I was saving all of my cardboard and packaging materials from when I order like Amazon or art supplies or whatever. Um, and then I would make new boxes. And then when I got really busy before Christmas, I'm like, oh my God. Well, first of all, I was running out. But second of all, it was so time consuming to be cutting the boxes and taping them together. Um, so I ended up ordering like a thousand dollars worth of products from Uline. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Uline. They do like office supplies and all of that. Um, and it, it's tons of boxes, tons of like styrofoam wrap and bubble wrap. Um, and the boxes, they just fold into the boxes. So I got them the proper sizes. Oh. And it's just like, yes, it was an additional cost. But it's worth it. But totally worth it. Yeah. So um, yeah, it saves me so much time. And then I have my little um, shipping label printer. I connect to my computer, print off my shipping label, slap it on, put my thank you card in with a note. Um, and off to Canada Post it goes. Where's the father's place you've sent to work? Australia. Oh my God, that's far. Yeah. That is far, far, <laughs> far, far, far. Like Definitely a milestone. I, sure. I, I, I want to go. Uh, I got I invited I'm... to New Zealand sometime. And like, I'm just thinking, like, it's like, you fly, it's like you fly and then you get there and you think you're there. Then you have to get on an airplane and then you stick Oh, I never it's even like thought of that. Long, 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 long. Yeah. I, you know, so... I go to Africa, but it's fine. Because, like, once you're in Europe, you're in Africa, kind of. Yeah. But, like, it's, like, 
far, far, far. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. But that was cool. What did you make for the person in Australia? Um, so the I did a live wedding painting. It was my first and only one so far. Definitely what, what open is, to doing more. Like a, like the couple? Or? Yeah. So she, the bride, was from Nova Scotia and her husband's from Australia. So they live there. And she had reached out to me. She found me on Instagram and asked if I would paint at their wedding at Picto Lodge last summer. And I had never done it before, but she believed in me. So I'm like, if she's believing in me, I'm just going to go for it. Right, sure, right, right. let's do it. And it was amazing. I got to stay there. I got to see their wedding and I cried like a baby, which I didn't expect. I'm just like, this is not <laughs> professional, Alyssa. Like just tears, but it's so beautiful. Um, and then I set up my easel and my paints and I painted it during their reception. And I didn't get to finish it. It was a 16 by 20 and it's people's very detailed mm. course. It's them getting married. And so I finished it back at home and then in my home studio. And then I shipped it to them in Australia and it made it to them in one piece. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. What do you love about what you do? Oh my gosh. Uh, well, it's very like I get wound up I guess <laughs> like just a lot going on anxiety and all that stuff so it really grounds me and like mm. brings me down and like um it just it's so feels so good when you can see it from start to finish mm. um so it's like it's grown my confidence immensely being doing this and it just brings me joy and I'm connecting with others and I just love it nice I don't know. okay you brought these other big painting and we're gonna talk about it but before i do that i have this question i want to ask though mm -hmm. what advice would you have for someone that wants to take this thing they love and actually you know like oh man i'm tired of the bank sucking my soul not the bank or whatever the job is yeah um what advice would you give that person um I would say to start off slow. I did read a book that I recommend to like everybody. Um, and it's, what is it called? The star, I can tell you later on, starving artist. It's basically shifting from the starving artist mentality to a thriving artist mentality. And it says that anyone that just quits their job and goes balls in, for lack of a better word, um, it, is high rate of failing, unfortunately. So if you are at your job and you hate it, but you can start kind of finding a bit of time to like improve your skill and build, and then eventually it starts getting bigger and then you can cut that other job out and that's the, the best way to do it. That's what I read and that's kind of what I've been working on. Um, and I would just say like practice, especially with in the art world, um, when I started three years ago, my paintings looked very different than they do now. It's a different mm. medium, but like my skill has improved immensely. So just like practice, practice lots of different things. Everyone says find a niche and I'm like, I am never finding a niche. Like I just paint it all. Mm. And now I've kind of fallen into a niche uh, accidentally. And yeah, then that's how you figure out what you want to do. So this is landscape, right? Okay, I just want to reach that. Yeah, landscape. <laughs> okay, talking about landscape, we'll just hang up and then show that bigger painting. Oh my god! So this is the waterfront. Yes. Do you know what you should you should paint one of those things like the hammocks? Oh yes. It's yeah. been I don't know four or five. I've I've been trying to get on one. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> like almost five years, I haven't gotten on it. But yeah. Yeah. You really love painting the water though. Why? Yeah. I mean, I know you said it's easy, but like, what is it about the water? Oh, it's not water? easy. Oh, oh, it's not no, easy? No. Oh, no, okay. No, not easy at all. And that's part of it is is the challenge. Um, I'm obsessed with blue. I've always loved blue pretty much all is my paintings. Is that your favorite color? Yes. Okay. I love blue. It's so calming and it's just so pretty. Great. Um, so that the reflections, figuring out the reflections is so fun and... Yeah, like water's just, we're, we're surrounded by it. And someone actually told me there's a statistic, I can't remember exactly what it is, but like the majority of artists are on the coast. Oh, which is, is super there a cool. reason why? We're probably just so inspired by Holy the coast. Like it's gorgeous. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I didn't, well, I don't paint, so obviously <laughs> I wouldn't know that. Why Why did you make this painting? Was this a commission or? Oh no, no this is an original. Is, this too. is an original, so it'll be available in my collection whenever I get around to dropping it. But um, I had gone to the, what was that? 
Van Gogh, the Van Gogh experience. I went there. With the thing in the wall. Yeah, the... it was really cool. And I went out for dinner after and then walking along the boardwalk to get the wine to wear off. And <laughs> it was just this really overcast night. Like I could barely see Dartmouth over there. Mm. And the sky didn't quite look like that. I made it look a little different for mm. the sake of the painting but it just it the reflections on the water I'm like I have to take pictures so I'm taking all these pictures and uh yeah I just knew I had to paint it and it was this one was actually quite challenging what, yeah what parts about it were um I really wanted to push myself with the lights um so just playing around with the brush strokes here and making like light is hard and it's that's actually what can like bring a painting to life is getting the lighting mm. proper so that's a constant thing that I'm working on so when people compliment me on that I'm like yes <laughs> 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 um and yeah it's it's just a new challenge that I've been working on and and like the lights down here mm. and sometimes I go in and I want certain things to be more detailed like drawing the lines in between the boards but then I'm like no I feel like that's taking away from the rest I want it more simpler so then I'm covering it back up like it's wow. never just a uniform thing that I'm doing I'm mm. here there everywhere like I said I think that makes sense why you kind of paint everything rather than do sections because mm -hmm. of how you see the painting yes absolutely yeah. and how long did this one take to make around a week as well I think yeah yeah. <laughs> and initially, I actually wanted to paint this on a 36 by 48, which I haven't painted that size yet. Wow. And as I was painting this, I'm like, I am so happy I didn't do this on <laughs> a 36 by 48. What, what like, size is this one? 20, uh, 24 by 36. So it's Half the size. holy shit. Yeah, yeah. So I'll work my way up to Good that. Luck. But yeah, it was it was tricky, like getting this the right um, like angle as well. You know, well. another thing and that also stands out for me is this, like the 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 thing on that a bridge, whatever yeah. thing. It's yeah. so detailed, and Thank like you. where you tie your boats and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's, yeah, it's so it's like it's envy inducing when oh, you see yeah. how beautiful he's like I can't, why can't i make something this <laughs> <laughs> well again like three years ago seven years ago i would not have been able to do this i would have tried mm. and like my water paintings were shit <laughs> at the beginning and i actually i swore i would never paint water and now i i love painting water it's so fun to figure so, it out so um the your collection is it gonna have a name or uh, the name of the painting? No, your collection. Oh, I have no idea yet. And actually, I was looking at all of them and then I realized, because I they were just all pictures I've taken the past couple of years that I've wanted to paint. So I didn't set out with anything specific in mind for a theme or anything. Right. But then I'm looking at all of them and the one thing they all have in common is water. They right, all right. have water in them, whether it is the Lunenburg painting, the water front, um... Peggy's Cove is in there and Lawrence Town is in there. So something to do with water. I don't know. I, I have to think about that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> I suck with names. I literally suck with names. And the thing was about me is like, I can't make, I can't write a film until I know what the title is. Mm. So like, I know this film, I know what is going to happen, but if I don't have that right title, I'm not going to write it. That's why I make like maybe okay. one film a year, which is lame, <sighs> but I, I I go around with like two. But once I have that right title, yeah, it's like, holy smokes. I got to be honest though. So now I'm, I'm trying to help people make their own films. So at least mm. I can get to do things. Cause, but, but I, I, I think I have, a new title of a film I want to make now. So next year I'll have a new film oh, or something. <laughs> okay. Um, so the last question I want to ask you is what are colors make me smile? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How did that come? Because that's a freaking awesome name. Oh, thank and you. you know, it's like, yes, what are colors make me smile, but why that though? Um, well, I st so I first started painting with acrylics on canvas and I wasn't blown away by it. It just didn't work like how I thought it should work, mm. which down the road I figure out that's not how painting works. You don't get it to work how you want it to work. You need to figure out how it works and then go from there. And that's mm. when my painting improved once I figured that out. Um, so I was like not 
keen on acrylics and then I switched to watercolors. No idea what I was doing. I wasn't even mixing water with it at first. I was like, hello, <laughs> watercolors. And then one day it just clicked. I'm like, I think I'm supposed to mix water with these. Um, and once I kind of st- like, so I had to let go of, again, what I thought I wanted it to do and and see what it does because you're mixing it with water. So depending on how much water you add or don't add, it will do different things when you put, you know, they say like um, wet paint on wet paint, it'll kind of disperse like you can do dry on or like wet on dry paper. Like there's just so much to it and different techniques. Mm. Um, and it was just, it was so fun and cool to like sit back and figure that all out. And it just, it brought me so much joy and it made me smile. Mm. Um, and I just thought like, I wanted a name that stood out and that if people could feel an emotion, then they would be more connected to it. So I went with watercolors, make me smile. Yeah, it works. Yeah. And your paintings make me smile. So. Thank you. And that's what I hear all the time. And like, I don't paint with watercolors anymore. I'm back to acrylics again. Mm. Um, and people still comment saying your watercolors make me smile. <laughs> um, and I don't have the heart to tell them it's not watercolors. <laughs> um, but like, how can I ever change my name? And then someone did say recently, well, acrylics do have water in them. Right, so it's, right, right, you know, right. and I'm painting a lot of water. So mm. I guess it sticks. Oh my God. I knew this was going to be a great, uh, conversation. Oh, thank Super you. grateful that you came. Thanks for sharing your work mm-hmm. and your process. And that amazing advice. Cause yeah, I don't think people should just quit that job and just. <laughs> well, I mean, and I don't blame them because you're so tired of that day in and day out. And then you, you're passionate and you want to share that with others and you have your idea. And, mm. but like just going like that straight to it can, it can work. It can, mm. but yeah, that's that adds a lot of stress to it. And there's so many things you have to figure out. Like it, I had to figure out painting, but then I have to figure out shipping. Then I have to figure out building a website and getting my name out there and then adding like scanning and printing and all the technology. Like there's just so many layers to it that mm. like trying to figure that all out while you're not working and you're trying to bring the income in, that would be a whole other layer of stress. Oh so, my God, I yeah. can't even believe it. I can't even imagine it. Anyway, Alisa, <laughs> thank you so much for coming to the podcast. Thank today. you.